Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to Mazanti Automobili and HWM Sports Cars, I'm taking you on an in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust sound video of this 2021 Mazanti Evantra. All of Mazanti Automobili and HWM Sports Cars, where this car can be ordered, contact details are in the description of the video. Luca Mazanti started his eponymously named company at the start of the 21st century after decades of working on a wide variety of both classic and modern cars. The aim was to restore the prestige of the small Italian car manufacturer by producing fully customizable, handcrafted machines that will offer a pure driving experience and be cherished by their owners. Evantra isn't the first car produced by Mazanti, but it is currently the only car in the lineup. However, it comes in four very different variations Classic, Pura, 781, and Mille Cavalli R. In this video, we will focus on the Evantra Classic. Evantra is formed around a high tensile strength molybdenum steel alloy chassis and comes in at 4,325mm long, 1,955mm wide, 1,225mm high, and has a curb weight of 1,300kg. We can now move to Avantra's powertrain. Firstly, we need to unlatch the rear panel. This can be done by pulling the lever found to the outside edge of the driver. Then moving around to the rear, we need to lift the heavy panel, which is self-supported by two central struts. This classic variant is powered by a mid-rear mounted, naturally aspirated 7-litre V8 that produces 751 brake horsepower and 860 Nm of torque. The highest spec, Mille Cavalli R, comes with a twin-turbo 7.4-litre V8 that produces 1,120 horsepower and 1,210 Nm of torque. The output of this classic results in a 0 to 62 mph or 100 km per hour time of 3 seconds and a top speed of over 224 mph or 360 km per hour. The extreme Mille Cavalli R offers a 2.7 second 0 to 62 mph hour time and a top speed of over 249 miles per hour. The structure just above the engine sends air into the engine from the roof mounted intake. When finished in the rear, we can lower and secure the panel. Moving down to the corners, we find 20 inch front and rear lightweight forward wheels made by OZ that currently come in four designs. In from these, we find 380mm front and 360mm rear carbon ceramic Brembo discs, standard on all models. Steel discs can also be specced. Evantra Classic stability is provided by front and rear McPherson type struts with adjustable dampers. But as we go up the model line to Mille Cavalli R, we find front and rear double wishbones. Now we've finished the model overview, we can start the in-depth exterior tour from front to back. The front grille is divided into two outer and one central sections. These are underlined by a carbon fibre splitter. Between this and the grilles, there are slim black divides that are styled on either side. Moving up, the grills allow cool air to flow for the radiators at the front, for the coolant systems on either side, an engine and cabin in the centre, where the bottom of the batch has been integrated into the design. Moving up, we come to the crest on the front of the bonnet. Moving back and on either side, we find main LED beams that are set quite far back and look out over the front of the arches. These are accompanied by separate indicators, with LED-shaped daytime running lights above. The short bonnet is dynamically formed, with two central lines that run up and split the three air outlets that send air from the front of the car. The 65 litre fuel tank is fitted to the right front of the car, and the fuel tank flap is fitted above it, integrated into the bonnet. The short windscreen that sits quite a bit under the bonnet is behind, with its single wiper. Continuing back, we come to the roof area. Here we find the large scoop that intravenously feeds air into the engine via the large conduit we saw earlier. We can now move down to the car's lateral aspect. This starts with a wide, carbon-bottomed air channel that helps to release air and therefore pressure from the front wheel arches, increasing stability. Another channel is built into the side above this that helps to channel air into the large grills behind that help to cool the engine and gearbox. Moving back to the front of the lateral aspect, we find the Italian flag next to indicators on the small vent. Behind from this is a small alcove where the door release can be found. Moving up, we come to the arch-top bicolor electrically adjustable mirrors. The doors behind are designed to incorporate some of the roof. Continuing back, we come to the top of the panel above the engine, with its dual windows to look into the engine bay. The optional rear wing is fitted behind in quite a high and tilted position to create as much rear downforce as possible. The different Evantra models come with varying levels of downforce creating structures, but in this setup, Classic produces around 1600 kilograms at 200 kilometers per hour. The rear of Aventra Classic starts with the name badge. On either side, we find rounded LED light complexes. 
Below these, there are three very angular air vents to help release pressure from the rear arches and heat from the engine bay and gearbox. Between these sections, we come to the central, dual exit, handmade, steel exhaust, and diffuser below. The bottom is painted red in celebration of the style design of Christian Le Bouton, with an inscription from the Divina Commedia. Now we've finished the exterior in-depth tour, we can move inside. Ivantra's wingspan doors can be opened by pressing the small button we saw earlier and pulling outwards. Inside, we find a fully customizable interior that we'll look at in depth, starting with the doors. The top of the inside of the wingspan doors are upholstered with a padded area for the occupant's comfort. The panel below is upholstered in black alcantara here and comes with a teardrop shaped pull. Between this and the armrest, we find this leather area. Continuing down, we come to a floating armrest at the bottom of the door interior. As we move into the cabin, we first come to the low and wide sill, topped with an aluminium kick plate with Mizanti text. At the rear of the sill, we find the large hinge for the wingspan doors. Now sitting in the driver's seat, we can view the steering wheel that starts with carbon fibre and gear change lights at the top, then perforated leather at the 9 and 3 grip positions. Centrally, we find an info screen and Mizanti crest, both surrounded by carbon with a small Alcantara section at the bottom. Between the wheel and the instrument screen, we find large carbon paddles for the car's 6-speed automated manual gearbox. We find a 7-speed manual in the Pura and a sequential in the Mille Cavalli, but Mizanti are currently developing their own double-clutch transmission that will come this year. The Mizanti key is a weighty metal fob that needs to be pushed into its port under the infotainment display. We can now hear the mighty sound of Avantra. <laughs> Now moving back inside, we can restart the interior in-depth tour by looking at the latches for the front and rear compartments that are to the left of the driver's seat. As we move up, we come to the exterior light controls and the first manly adjustable air vent. Moving across, we come to the fully digital instrument display for revs, selected gear, water temperature, battery and fuel level, speed and mileage. The small screen in the wheel offers info for lap timer, oil pressure, speed and RPM. Moving up to the dash, we see two clearly defined areas, divided by strips on either side of the central vents. I don't believe there's a glove compartment to the left side, but we do find a custom plaque showing the car's build number. Moving up and into the middle, we come to the dual manually adjustable air vents. Mizanti Tech sits between these and the 15-inch touchscreen infotainment display. Here we can access menus such as radio and Bluetooth audio, climate controls, phone for calls and messages, navigation and settings. Below the screen we come to the keyport and drive mode selector, where we can change between Strada and Corsa, or road and track, that alters the car's throttle, steering and damping feel. Continuing back we come to electric window controls and long manual handbrake. There's a smooth finished panel back from this that can be used as a central armrest, but can be lifted up to a very small storage area. Above this area is a padded protrusion that has a plaque with the engine data. On either side, the four bucket seats can be fully customised and tailored to the owner, and can only be moved back and forth quickly using the bar at the front. As we've now finished the majority of the interior tour, we can move back outside to view the car's main storage areas. The leather upholstered underside of the boot lid is fully customizable. There is a brace that enhances the car's stability, separating the storage area from the covered engine bay. 
If we take a closer look around the boot, we find a very usable amount of storage space considering the performance and aesthetic of the car. Once again, the colour and style is fully customizable. Using the other lever, the bonnet can be unlatched. Here, we can see the car's carbon fibre construction and various oil pots. Looking forward, we can view the bonnet air funnel that takes air from the front and sets it over the car for enhanced streamlining and downforce. Moving back inside briefly, we can view the final few features. Looking up, we find the Italian flag, which are buttons for the fuel pump to turn the car off and on. The black buttons are to defrost the main windows, the internal lock controls, and to open the petrol cap on the bonnet. So that concludes my in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust sound video of this 2021 Mazanti Avantra Classic that can be ordered through HWM Sports Cars. You can find all of their contact details in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, thanks for watching.